hello friends in this lecture we'll see a shorter method for finding principal stresses for this purpose we'll assume a 2d stress system we have plane ab and bc with us on plane bc we have stress sigma x on plane ab we have stress sigma y and we have shear stress and complementary shear stress tau and we need to find principal stresses now let's assume ac to be principal plane okay now as we have assumed ac to be principal plane we know that on principal plane there will be no shear stress so there will be only normal stress okay so this is sigma and we have no shear stress so now to find out the value of sigma first let us assume a coordinate axis for our reference this is x this is y so now we can apply summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 so before applying summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 let's convert these stresses into forces area of AC is 1 then the area of AB will be cos theta and the area of BC will be sin theta so the corresponding forces will be sigma x sin theta will have tau sin theta will have tau cos theta and sigma y cos theta so these are forces now and obviously sigma multiplied by the area of plane AC which is 1 will remain sigma now first resolving in the direction of sigma x that is summation fx equal to 0 we have theta here so we have sigma sin theta in the direction of x so we'll have sigma sin theta apart from that we have sigma x sin theta in the opposite direction so we'll have minus sigma x sin theta and then we have tau cos theta so it's also in the opposite direction so it's tau cos theta equal to 0 so here we have sigma minus sigma x sin theta and this tau cos theta we can take it to the other side of equality this is now tau cos theta then applying summation fy is equal to 0 we have sigma cos theta in the upward direction then we have minus sigma y cos theta and we have minus tau sin theta that too in the opposite direction now we have sigma minus sigma y cos theta equal to tau sine theta so let's name this equation as 1 and this equation as 2 so here we have our two equations equation 1 and 2 on multiplying these equations we have to multiply equation 1 by equation 2 we'll have multiplying 1 and 2 we'll have sigma minus sigma x sigma minus sigma y and we'll have sine theta cos theta component sine theta and cos theta and we'll have tau square sine theta cos theta the sine theta and cos theta will get cancelled out and we'll have a quadratic in terms of sigma square sigma square minus sigma x plus sigma y multiplied by sigma and then we'll have sigma x and sigma y multiplied by sigma y and this tau square will come from the other side of the equality and this will be minus upon solving this equation you'll get the same result 
you'll have two roots of this equation you'll have half of sigma x plus sigma y plus minus half of root over sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus 4 tau square and this is the same expression that we got earlier and the value of theta on which principal plane exists can be found out by substituting the value of sigma in either of the equations either 1 or either 2 ok now let's move on to the next concept of maximum shear stress now we will have a look at maximum shear stress till now we have seen planes of zero, zero shear stress and on that plane only we have maximum and minimum normal stresses now we have to find maximum shear stress what we have to find the value of the maximum shear stress and the location of the plane at which maximum shear stress occurs so for this purpose we will take two perpendicular planes plane AB and BC and these planes are nothing but principal planes and what we are trying to find out is the location of the planes on which maximum shear stress occurs with reference to the principal planes so these are principal planes so it will have no shear stress just sigma 2 which is the minor principal stress sigma 1 the major principal stress and we have to find out the stress on an inclined plane which is at angle theta to the minor principal stress here and we will find out the value of sigma theta and the value of tau theta so let's take the reference axis parallel to tau theta and sigma theta we have x axis here we have y axis and now resolving in the direction of tau theta will have first of all let's multiply these individual stresses by their respective areas to turn these stresses into forces the area of the plane AC is 1 so sigma theta and tau theta will remain as it is and the area of plane BC is cos theta sorry sin theta so it will become sigma 1 sin theta and the area of the plane AB is cos theta so it will become sigma 2 cos theta so resolving in the direction of tau theta we have tau theta as it is and then we'll have a component of sigma 1 sin theta in the direction of tau theta which will be sigma 1 sin theta cos theta and it will be in the same direction so sigma 1 sin theta cos theta and we have sigma 2 cos theta here and its component will be in the opposite direction to tau theta and so it will be sigma 2 cos theta multiplied by sine of theta and it's equal to 0 so we have tau theta here and it will be sigma 2 cos theta sine theta minus sigma 1 sine theta cos theta so this will be sigma 2 minus sigma 1 and you'll have sine theta cos theta and this will be sigma 2 minus sigma 1 multiplied by sine 2 theta by 2 so we have expression of tau theta when theta is the inclination to the principal axis and here minor principal axis this tau theta will be maximum when sine 2 theta goes to 1 that means 2 theta will be equal to 90 degree which implies that theta will be equal to 45 degree so the maximum shear stress occurs at an angle of 45 degree to the principal axis and the value of tau max will be sigma 2 minus sigma 1 by 2 and on substituting the values of sigma 1 and sigma 2 that we got earlier we'll have tau max equal to 
half of under root sigma x minus sigma y whole square plus 4 tau square okay so this is the expression for tau max and from this we can say that the maximum shear stress is one half of the algebraic differences between the principal stresses so for all solids of three dimension there must exist three principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 it's major principal stress minor principal stress and intermediate principal stress so in this case let me show you how to calculate the maximum shear stress so I will show you now that how to calculate maximum shear stress so for this purpose let's take a three-dimensional object so we'll have three principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 and we have to calculate tau max so for first example let's take sigma 1 as 4 sigma 2 as 2 and sigma 3 as 0 keep in mind that I have said that the maximum shear stress is one half of the algebraic difference between the principal stresses so for tau max we'll have 4 minus 0 divided by 2 that means it's equal to 2 so we'll have tau max equal to 2 so for the second example we have 4 we have minus 2 and we have 0 to calculate tau max here what we'll do is 4 minus of minus 2 divided by 2 and this will give us 3 so you have to see what is algebraically maximum what is algebraically minimum and then you have to take an algebraic difference keep in mind that this is not the minimum principal stress this is intermediate principal stress which is compressive in nature but you have to take algebraically minimum to find tau max if you have 4 2 and 2 then you'll get 4 minus 2 you can take any of them and divide it by 2 and this will be equal to 1 if you have minus 4 2 and minus 2 then the greatest difference is between 2 and minus 4 so you'll have 2 minus of minus 4 divided by 2 and this will give us 3 so this is how you calculate tau max you have to take algebraically maximum and minimum values and take a difference and then divide it by 2 so this is it for now and we'll meet in the next class till then bye bye